discretion. We will present site plan photographs and maps of the properties involved in today's cases. We will also present any letters we have in support or opposition to a particular case, as well as any correspondence we have received from other governmental agencies. At the conclusion of our presentation, the appellant will present their case to the board along with any person in support. If there is opposition to a case, the board will then hear from those parties. After the opposition has presented their testimony, the appellant will have a period for rebuttal. The board, in its rules, provides the appellant in cases without opposition 10 minutes for the applicant to present their case. In a contested case, the board provides 15 minutes for each side to present their testimony. Should the appellant wish to provide rebuttal testimony, the appellant should revert, reserve some of their allotted 15 minutes. All section numbers that we refer to today come directly from the Metropolitan Zoning Code, which was adopted by the Metropolitan Council and became effective on January 1, 1998, and applies to the entire jurisdiction of the Metropolitan Government. I'll introduce and make part of the record the entire zoning code and will dispense from the reading of any individual sections unless the appellant or opposition requests their reading. The zoning rule requ requires that these proceedings be taped. Therefore, it is imperative that anyone addressing the board come forward, speak into the microphone, identify yourself, and then make your presentation. It should be noted that if it is found that anyone has presented false or misleading testimony to the board that would have affected the board's decision, any approval may be revoked at a later date by means of a show cause hearing. The board will go through all the cases set for today's public hearing. After each case, the board will discuss and vote on that case. The board is vested with the power to act on these cases under Metropolitan Zoning Code Section 17.40.180. The code requires four members of this seven-member board to be present to constitute a quorum. The code also requires four affirmative votes to grant your application. In the event there are only four members present, and there are not four affirmative votes, the application shall be re-advertised for the next available public hearing cycle. In the event there are five or more members present and there are not four affirmative votes, the case will remain on the board's agenda for the next 30 days. Applications that fail to receive four affirmative votes within 30 days of the public hearing shall be deemed denied by operation of law. The appellant or any agreed party owner property owner may request a rehearing within 60 days of this public hearing. Further, the appellant or any aggrieved property owner may also appeal the board's decision to Chantry Court within that same 60-day period. After that time has elapsed, the board's decision becomes final and no further action can be taken. If you are an appellant and your case is granted, it will be necessary for you to obtain your permit for which you've applied. It should be noted that a permit must be obtained within two years for the board's approval to remain valid. Mr. Chairman, I submit that all the cases have been filed today in proper order, that all appellants have been notified by certified mail as required by the code, all affected property owners have been notified, and the legal ad has been published in the Tennessee and as required by the code. Do we have any elected uh, officials with us today? Seeing none. We do have a couple of preliminary announcements. The first is that Case number 2015-033, which is Bethel World Outreach Church, has been deferred. That case has been deferred to our next meeting, which is June the 18th. So the Bethel case on Granny White Pike will not be heard today. Also, case number 2015-049. This is Jeff Flowers. This is the property that's located at 411 South 14th Street. Uh, has also uh, been, no, I'm sorry, wrong case. Um, going to case number 2015-052. This is Bernard Wilson, the property located at 2013 Neal Avenue. That case has also been deferred to the June 18th meeting, our next meeting. Anyone here for that case? It has been deferred. Okay, the board has a consent agenda. 
A board member reviews the record in each case prior to the hearing, and if, in their opinion, the applicant meets the criteria for the application requested, and they feel the testimony in the case would not alter the material facts, they recommend the case to the remainder of the board for approval. We will enter into, a rec into the record those cases that have been recommended, and if there's anyone opposed to those cases, please raise your hand, and the case will be removed from the consent agenda and heard in its regular order. Today, the cases that we have slated for the consent agenda are case, first case is case number 2015-050. This is Payman Zod Appellant and Payman Zod owner of the property located at 1201 Gallatin Pike requesting a variance from the fence, from the requirements of fences um, um, uh, within the CS district. Uh, this is an existing car lot and uh, the uh, fence requirement they're asking for the variance because the fence is required to have a solid masonry pillar. It has iron pillars. Um, we have uh, some evidence that the fence um, was actually in place prior to the date of the ordinance that, um, that made the uh, solid masonry pillars uh, a requirement. Um, and so we believe that the uh, fence may be grandfathered. And so we're recommending that case to the board. Is there anybody here who is in opposition to case number 2015-050 for the property at 1201 Gallatin Pike? Seeing none. The next case that we have slated for the consent is Brett Smith. This, I'm sorry, this is case number 2015-051. This is Brett Smith, the appellant, and Parkway Baptist, owner of the property located at 505 Cunnett Parkway, requesting a special exception from 1716-170E in the RS-20 district. This is to add 87 parking spaces to an existing parking lot uh, for the church. We have received a recommendation from the planning department. They recommend approval. Public Works takes no exception. Uh, we understand that the neighborhood meeting has been held and the uh, applicant agrees that they will comply with all drainage, lighting, and landscaping requirements that would be required uh, under existing codes. Uh, based upon that, we are recommending that case for the consent agenda. Opposition. Is there any opposition to this case? Seeing none. The next case that we have slated for the consent agenda is case number 2015-053. This is Lone Oak LLC appellant and Lone Oak LLC owner of the property located at 5502 New York Avenue requesting a special exception from the setback. The setback that is required is 40.5. They are requesting 30.5 feet. It's in the CS district. The uh, planning department has recommended approval. The public works department takes no exception, and we are recommending this case for the consent agenda as well. Is there anybody here in opposition to case number 2015-053? Seeing none. The next case that we have slated for the consent agenda is case number 2015-054. This is Michael Bressman, appellant and Metro Government Power Board, owner of the property located at 6503 Thunderbird Drive. They are requesting a variance in the side yard setback in the R10 district to establish a communications hut. Um, we have a letter from Councilman Baker in support. We have no uh, letters or communications uh, in opposition. In looking at the property, there are topographical features of this property that necessitate the variance in the setbacks. There is a drainage or a creek in front. There are trees in the back and there are existing uh, NES uh, equipment uh, in the middle of the property necessitating that the communications huts be located um, within the setback. And based upon those topographical features, we've recommended this case for consent. Is there anybody here in opposition to case number 2015-054 uh, on Thunderbird Drive? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman, that is the consent agenda that we have for today.
Okay, so we have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, if I could address you. I would need to recuse on case number 20150054, so if you don't mind making two motions for the consent agenda. That would be fine. Oh, I'm sorry, that would be fine. Okay, so we have a consent agenda for cases 050, 051, 053. We've got a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Then we have a second consent agenda, which we will have um, one recusal from, and it's o it's case 054. Got a motion, got a second. I'll second. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have a second. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll <laughs> Thank second. you. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Thank you all. For those cases that have been, uh, were on the consent agenda and granted, please feel free to leave or you're welcome to stick around and uh, watch us if you prefer. Okay, going to the first case for today's meeting. Uh, it will be case number 2015-049. This is Jeff Flowers, appellant and Jeff Flowers, owner of the property located at 411 South 14th Street, requesting a variance in the street setback for privacy fence in the R6 district to erect a privacy fence. It's referred to the board under 1712.040E26. The appellant has alleged that the board would have jurisdiction under 17.40.180B. Uh, Mr. Flowers, uh, feel free to come on up. We're going to uh, have Mr. Harrison is going to put uh, our uh, PowerPoint up and run through our presentation first. Is there anybody here in opposition to this case? Seeing opposition. Okay, each side will now have 15 minutes. If you prefer, if you would like to reserve some of your 15 minutes for rebuttal, please let the board know uh, before you start your presentation. How much? Okay. Make it three. Ten up there. <laughs> three whatever you want to do it. Would you just put, put ten up there, and then that way you get still got five sure. left over. Sure, sure, that'd be good. We can do that. That'd be okay. good. Uh, can I, Mr. Okay. Harrison? Are you? Yeah. Oops. Move back up. Property is located on the east side of uh, South 14th Street, just north of Shelby Avenue. It's property looking at it from overhead. This is an overhead view aerial. Fence going down Shelby. That's the fence here on the top left picture, running down by the sidewalk, and the fence down the bottom right photograph. Properties across the street and a property next door. <coughs> And that's what we've got on. Uh, for the board, we received a letter, and Mr. Harrison, is that 049? Yes, we received a letter uh, about an hour ago from Councilman Westerholm, and I'll. Uh, do you all have that letter? You do? Okay. Yeah. Mr. Flowers, do you have a copy of that I letter? I do, yeah. I was actually prepared to share it. I didn't realize if the board had it or not. Okay. Okay. All yours. Okay. Oh, I didn't know if you were going to discuss the letter. So, uh, well, the, the email from Councilman uh, Westerholm indicated that he's, uh, he's reviewed the situation with planning, and uh, from what he's saying in the email there, he is now in favor of granting the variance, his, showing his support, and that he spoke to uh, Public Works and that they are also... Uh, they see no problem with the line of sight concern uh, if they can get approval for a stop sign at the uh, at the intersection to make it a four-way stop. So uh, we would request that that the board consider that. As far as, do I need to have the intercom on? Yes, please. Is it on? It's on. The red light. On. Yes. Okay. So uh, anyway, as far as the, the variance itself, I have some material. Uh, if you can, can you put the slides back up that show uh, the the uh, picture, the drawings, and it also had a had a uh, topo. There should be one more with a topo, maybe. Can these be passed out to the board? Sure. Okay. 
So the problem with the variance, the setback, is if we move the fence 10 feet from the sidewalk, so the fence is indicated up there on the drawing right now, running parallel to Shelby, there is a steep slope which is indicated in the topo on the second page of that drawing. If you move the fence to 10 feet back, you're going to have about a 10 to 15 foot drop off. So my understanding is they're trying to increase pedestrian traffic in, in, that, in the area. You're going to have a safety uh, concern, and the owner of the property is not interested in having people falling you know, into his yard. There was a previous existing fence there. At uh, one point, it was a steel fence that we removed. It was completely grown over. Uh, so the line of sight has actually been improved by what, uh, by what we've done. So uh, the safety concern is obviously moving the fence back. Uh, Public Works has reviewed it according to this email from Mr. Westerholm, and they agree that there's a bigger safety concern in moving the fence versus leaving it where it is. Uh, I have more information that I can share. I feel like with you know, Public Works being behind it, that we're in pretty good shape. Um, you have a picture of the line of sight. Can you show that again? Of the actual fence there. So there's your line of sight. And what I wanted to share with the board is there are numerous areas one block away. This can be passed around. And, and there's your line of sight at 15, the next block over, completely grown over, where Public Works, quite honestly, has not cleaned the fence. It's the same fence that we replaced that was an old rundown fence that was grown over, as I said, as grown over as that fence is in that picture right there. So we cleared the fence, or cleared the growth, and then ultimately when the construction was done, we replaced the fence with a privacy fence. We've moved it three times at the request of uh, Public Works to improve the line of sight. So we spent quite a lot of money on trying to accommodate their request. But again, uh, we feel like we've got a safer line of sight there than in that picture I just sent you, which is one block over. It's the exact same fence that continues down Shelby between 15th and 14th. So I guess for the sake of time, I think we probably have enough information to, to understand the situation. And with uh, Public Works and the reversal, uh, Councilman Westerholm, I believe, spoke in opposition at the first meeting. Um, and we now have a, a letter of uh, agreement. And I guess I'll close it. Okay, so you'll have uh, whatever it is. Yeah, thank you. Well, can we? Oh, ask some questions. Yeah, sorry. So, this is the third time you've moved this fence. Yes. And we, at each time, it was because of Public Works. Yes. So Public Works initially came out and said the line of sight was was not good enough. The fence originally extended to where the old fence ran, which was past the bus stop. There's a bus stop at that corner there. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually, and we had put the original wooden fence that we put up right where the old metal fence was. We moved it back. They said move it again. We moved it back. And then we changed the angle of the fence, which you'll see in the drawing of the fence. It angles from Shelby up slightly down the slope and then back towards the house. Mm -hmm. So we made three changes to the fence. And we've improved the line of sight to 250 feet at the intersection. The tree is the problem. If you bring up uh, the picture, well, no, you, the tree is not in that shot there. So if I have, is this still on my clock? No, we, when we ask questions, it's not against your time. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to keep passing things around. But this is the same intersection. There's a tree at the corner there that's been hit dozens of times. Uh, Mr. Westerholm said he could attest to four times that he knew of. Uh, Public Works initially requested that the owner cut the tree down after he purchased the property because it's, it is what is in the line of sight. So what they're trying to do is improve the line of sight from behind the tree, which is before the crosswalk or the stop line uh, on the street there. So uh, the tree, if you remove the tree, then this gentleman is going to have cars in his front yard. If anybody's familiar with that intersection, it's very busy. People come around the corner too quick. There's a park across the street. There's that bus stop right there. And those are much bigger problems than the line of sight we believe that that, that fence is causing. And you have a park across the street where if people want to, you know, want to have lunch or whatever, you have cars going by 50 miles an hour through there sometimes. Which so is apparently wild. there's a Shelby Hills Neighborhood Association. Why are they against this? I mean, you met with them. My opinion? Assuming. No, no, no one has come to me. Oh, you haven't? Okay, I well, we'll, we'll wait for the opposition. Okay. But um, sure. tell me this about the traffic and 
can, you know, people, one of the people that wrote a letter in opposition, uh, Jason Garrett, says that basically that who has, he claims that he's already been in a traffic accident um, because of intersection visibility, said that this would make it worse. This where the location is sure. right now. Dispense would make yes. it worse? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you can tell me if that's worse than what's at 15th. I mean, and it's been moved back. The tree is in the line of sight. That picture demonstrates it. I mean, the tree, you can see how many times it's been hit, too. Okay, last thing. So help me out here. Public Works tells you to move it once, and then they come back two other times? How yes. did that happen? Because it wasn't far enough. We that said, let's try moving it back however many rungs it was. But did you move it back to where they wanted it? Or? Yes, we moved it to where they wanted it. They came back, checked the line of sight, they weren't happy with it. The problem was they kept getting in that tree, so they would have to go behind the tree, which puts them six feet from the stop line in the street, okay? Before, you know, so they wanted a line of sight from behind this tree. So they came back and asked us to move it again, and then we, we offered, why don't we just angle the fence off of Shelby towards the house at this point to improve that line of sight. And the third time after they moved it? Well, the property was sold, then they knocked on the homeowner's door and uh, requested permission to cut down the tree. <laughs> but the, the fence location, Public Works, they said it was fine after you having to move it the other times. The next thing I heard was we received a violation for the variant, the, uh, the 10 foot setback from Shelby. And our point was we can't go 10 feet off of Shelby. The reason the old metal fence was there in the first place that we replaced was for safety. It's a straight drop off. If you, you know, the topo, is Michael here? No, the engineer who actually had that topo done uh, on another project um, shows you how steep it is. Okay. It's quite steep. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, then you're going to have um, a lot of time for rattle, probably seven minutes and 23 seconds. Okay. Got it. All righty. Thank you. Opposition? I'm Elizabeth Smith. I'm the president of the Lachlan Springs Neighborhood Association. I live at 1800 Russell Street. I'm also the faculty sponsor for a group called Stop Take Notice, which is all about pedestrian safety. We held a, um, a large forum on Friday where many of the local, uh, including Councilman Westerholm uh, and all the mayoral candidates, uh, were there talking about how we need, as a city, to put the safety of our residents and our visitors above uh, traffic flow problems and um, other interests. And this fence, I do understand from, from Mr. Westerholm, he has contacted me as well, that a four-way stop is on the consent agenda for June 8th. And Public Works, according to his email to me, says they will then not have a problem with the fence if there's a four-way stop. But if the four-way stop is ever removed because of traffic flow issues, which those are currently uh, high priority for Public Works in Nashville, although we'd like to see that changed, the fence will still be there and there will still be a problem. Um, I'm not sure when um, Mr. Flowers says that it it improved, but I drive this, this stretch of road every day and there is no way to see safely to pull onto Shelby from 14th without completely pulling into the crosswalk. So that, that pedestrians, actually that's a ticketable offense. Uh, if I were to be cited for that uh, by a police officer, it would be fully uh, under the law because you cannot pull into the crosswalk that is against our Regulation. So it's, it, we're in a conundrum right there. There's just no way to pull out onto Shelby, which, as Mr. Flowers pointed out, is an extremely busy intersection. There's a lot of stuff going on there. And I think granting the variance is a bad idea because if the stop sign doesn't happen, then we're going to be in a bigger problem. There are many, many people that walk. We pride ourselves in Lachlan Springs on being a walkable neighborhood. That's something that... Um, brings people to our neighborhood. And I'm not certain exactly how much privacy this fence actually affords that property, but we as a neighborhood strongly oppose granting a variance. We'd like to see the fence 
reconfigured, removed altogether uh, so that it's safer for not only um, pedestrians but bicyclists and drivers at that corner. I don't think the condition of another corner should be evidence for why we should allow the line of sight at this corner to be uh, any less than perfect. Um, the one on 15th is also problematic, but instead of saying that, well, it, because it's problematic, this one should be fine too, I think we should require the corner on 15th to be corrected so that it's easier for people to see at that intersection as well. So as a neighborhood, we, um, we strongly oppose granting a variance. We would like to see that stop sign, but it's on the consent agenda for June 8th, and hopefully that will happen. There's always a chance that it won't. So that's, that's our argument. We just don't want to see uh, something happen to a stop sign that is promised, but is not there yet. And then still have the fence to see around. The tree is also a problem. I totally agree with that. Um, but I also don't understand the argument, and I really am trying to understand the argument that we shouldn't cut the tree down because then there would be cars in the yard of the person who has chosen to live on the corner of a really busy street. Um, is the tree providing, is it supposed to provide some kind of buffer for all those cars that are apparently whizzing through the intersection and we'd rather hit the tree than the house? Uh, I just think that the safety of our residents is more important than the little bit of privacy the fence might offer or whatever it costs to move it. So Lock on Springs opposes it, so does Shelby Hills, although they are, I don't think, present today. I can't speak for their president, but I can speak for some of their uh, residents um, who also agreed that this is a dangerous place and we would like to see it improved. Thank you. Oh, we just, have some questions. Just a second, Sorry. Sorry. So, uh, what, what about the safety of the pedestrians on the sidewalk on Shelby next to the property where the, where the hill is? I'm not certain that I understand how, um, I know that it is a very steep hill. The fence that was there before was not, uh, I, I don't know how that, how is the fence going to, what, what are you suggesting is that if people are walking on the sidewalk, they're going to tip over and roll down the hill? Is that the problem? Is that, is that what we're talking about? I, I believe that is the issue um, that, that was raised. I don't think that that's as important as pedestrians being able to cross safely on a street. So, I mean, a car can do so a lot does, more damage than fence, a tumble down a hill. How does the fence prevent pedestrians from crossing in the crosswalks? If a car is parked in the crosswalk because the driver cannot see around the fence. But it, public safety said that there is enough sight line. That's with, not with what the, the, the new configuration. That's not the what the message that I got said. They what I the message that I got from Westerholm said that uh, public works will not uh, require that it be moved if a stop sign is put in. That the stop sign will, will solve the problem. That's what his email to me said. I don't know but, what his email to you but said. You want the, so then you're, are you okay with it if there's a stop sign there? If there is a stop sign there, and we are 100% certain that the stop sign will not be removed, um, then yeah, I mean, it's not a very pretty fence, but of course it wouldn't be a problem then if the stop sign is there. But my fear is that if, if we grant a variance, uh, if Public Works says it's not necessary if there's a stop sign, then I, I would hate to see us grant a variance because the stop sign could go away. And then we have a fence that has been granted a variance that is going to keep us from being able to see. Because I, I know that from all the work I've done with pedestrian safety downtown and the Public Works representative who was at our panel last week said that um, up until now, Public Works, their top priority has been traffic flow, not pedestrian safety. And they acknowledge that was the truth. So, so I just don't so want are you, that So are you happen. implying that, or are you saying that they've been removing four-way stops? No, I haven't, I'm not implying that or saying that at all. I'm just saying that that traffic study that is allowing this four-way stop to be in, put in place now 
about six weeks ago when I asked Councilman Westerholm about the same issue, is it possible that we'll get a, a stop sign at 14th? He told me that the traffic study did not support it. And so now that same study has somehow turned around to support it. And I just, I also know that there are quite a few people who are opposed to the stop sign because it's at, uh, it falls at the bottom of the slight hill and that they think it's going to impede traffic uh, during rush hour. It will slow traffic down, traffic flow will be affected. So that's, that's a concern that, you know, if the stop sign is there, then there will not be a problem. But if the stop sign is not approved, and, or if there's a traffic flow problem and they come and decide to take it back out, then we'll have a problem. And if there's a variance granted, then the fence can stay and we'll be in trouble. I don't know about the tree. I don't know what's happening on the tree. Do we have any other questions? You made a comment about the the um, appearance of the fence. Well, I just don't think it's a very attractive fence, but that's my aesthetic opinion, and that's not what really is the issue here. I think the bigger issue is can we see around it in order to safely pull on a Shelby? So, so why did you bring it up? Mm -hmm. But I think it was in response to a question that uh, would I be okay with it if it, there was a stop sign? Well, I just... You know, if there's a stop sign and there's a fence there, it's okay, but I, th I just don't think it's a very attractive fence. And I've had about 15 emails from neighbors saying that that's their objection to it, is that its appearance is not um, what they would like to see on that stretch of Shelby. Well, what would you like to see other than no fence? Hmm. Well, I think a really nice uh, wrought iron fence would be attractive. You can see around it. It would be quite beautiful. But I understand this is supposed to be a privacy fence and that would not provide privacy. I don't see what kind of privacy it actually provides anyway because of the topography, as Mr. Flowers pointed out. It's very difficult to see that it gives much privacy to the homeowner at all. So you don't feel like that fence prevents people from driving up the street from looking into that backyard? Mm, if you drive down Shelby from... Um, Shelby Park, for example, the slope, I mean, you can see all into the backyard as you're driving up to the fence. I mean, it's very visible. I, I, you can see the um, chairs underneath the deck. Uh, all those things are very easy to see from the street. I have no other questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much, ma'am, and uh, it's your time for rebuttal. Um. Well, I mean, I think she made a couple of valid points. I mean, the, the tree, uh, quite honestly, is the problem. It's not the fence. So I don't know how many times I can say it. The line of sight, if the tree wasn't there, is exactly what it should be. Uh, there's no, no other way to, to put that. Um, the reason I showed the intersection at 15th is not so much to try to justify a line of sight at another, but to show, for one, that public works did not seem to be concerned about safety at 15th and Shelby, and the group behind the, who was just speaking doesn't seem to be concerned about safety at that corner. They are now, because we brought it up and made attention to it. Uh, it's more about an ugly fence, which I don't personally think is ugly. It's a standard privacy fence. It offers quite a bit of privacy. It keeps debris from blowing into the yard. There's a bus stop. You have people smoking cigarettes, dropping their cigarette butts beer cans, things roll into the yard. So the, the gentleman has a right to have had the fence. So hopefully the conversation is not about the style or the type of fence or how ugly it is. Uh, the practicality of the fence, and we've accommodated Public Works. They have now, after reviewing it again with uh, Mr. Westerholm, who went to the site, uh, who looked at the topo map, he realizes how steep it is. We can't give up one set of safety for another. The best solution is to put a stop sign at the intersection and uh, maybe fight the battle if they take the stop sign away. I've never heard of a stop sign being removed, but maybe to be replaced with a stop light. But other than that, the opposition has been more about look and not safety. That has been my, my feel from the comments that I've received. But to not grant the variance and to move that fence down the slope 
you're going to have a dangerous situation. That's why Metro put the fence that's there that continues past that. There's a very deep, I'm developing right behind that. It's 25 feet down from Shelby to the bottom. That's why the fence is there. That's it. Any questions from the board? Okay, I'm gonna to move to close the public hearing. Discussion by the board. Direction of public work. How many times? Twice? Three, I believe. And I guess I take it. I think public works is very concerned about safety too, so I have a little bit of a issue with that comment that I heard. So. Let me ask you this. Um, the councilman and public works seem to have come to an agreement on a four way stop, and the councilman asked that uh, we make any approval contingent on the approval of an always stop, would anyone on the board be upset if that contingency was made not only the approval but the existence of a four-way stop? And that way, if it ever was pulled out, you'd have to revisit the fence. I would offer that motion. <laughs> then I, why don't you go for it? <laughs> I don't have a cheat sheet. Okay, I will be glad to do that. Do that for me, sir. I will do it. And I'll offend them. Yeah, all right. I move that the board approve the variance because all of the requirements of MCL 17.40.370 have been met. The board finds that the unique characteristics of the property are the topography of the side yard and its steep drop. And so we approve the variance contingent upon both the approval of an all-way stop at this intersection and the actual existence of the four-way stop. Therefore, if the stop sign's ever removed, the variance would be removed and they'd have to come back in front of the board. So I'll second that. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Thank you. Do we have any other further business before the board? Seeing none, we have a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Board's adjourned. <laughs>